Hey guys, it's Venus and uh, it is December which announces the end of the year and uh, today, uh, this year was a crazy year not today, uh, today no, today I am normal I do not drink, I don't fall off staircases I don't waste money anymore I live in a two-story house I am engaged uh, I have a I just picked a giant plushie out of a um, crane game that was yesterday. Life's good. I'm totally in my lane. But uh, until a couple of months ago, that wasn't the case. So I'm just gonna start by telling you what happened January 2022 so you know how I kind of have a problem with alcohol okay actually that's that's like an underestimation uh, I'm straight up an alcoholic and if people like so people think that being an alcoholic just means like you drink bozo all day long but I realized like being in like a self-help group and going to therapy being an alcoholic is like even if you stop drinking you're still miserable so you need therapy and self-help groups um which I'm doing and I feel better um as a journal mm -hmm. yes I do that uh so like being like lazy and recently in journaling and I definitely feel better on days when I journal so should pick, probably pick that up again but yeah um it's alcoholism is a disease like it's like physical as well as spiritual like once you stop drinking the physical stuff goes away but the spiritual part of it the psychological part of it doesn't go away like I'm still an alcoholic even if I don't drink I have an alcoholic mind and I do crave alcohol sometimes um, but yeah that's why um, you know I do all this stuff to uh, keep myself sober one day at a time now anyway recap January 2022 I had a problem with alcohol already at that point and I knew that but I was kind of in denial about it because things weren't so bad like I could like do my job or, and I could pay bills and I could do stuff but that was pretty miserable inside anyway so me and my friend see back then boyfriend had a talk I remember like I was drinking strong zero right that was like my go-to drink and strong zero is like four locos in America cheap like 90% booze um and I was drinking four cans of that a day 500 milliliter um yeah so then my boyfriend said why don't you try switching to wine or um sake uh because that's real alcohol and strong zero is just like some bubbly water mixed with ethanol and that's not real alcohol drink classy so yeah um i dropped all the strong zero i kept for locos and i stick to wine which is even higher in person since in alcohol but i told myself it's classy i'm not drinking cheap bozo anymore i'm drinking wine i'm drinking sparkling wine um which actually then ended up pretty much looking the same while I was drinking because alcohol in the end is alcohol so I was just like doing the exact same thing except then with wine and wine is usually 30% in alcohol so I was getting way more wasted on wine than I was getting on strong zero um, and obviously as an alcoholic uh, but once I start drinking I can't stop so um yeah i stick to wine and i started getting like up in the mornings and feel like really irritable and like um i need like a hair of the dog to like kind of get this uh, weird feeling off of me 
this is kind of the start where I started getting like alcohol dependency. Anyway, I could quit for like a couple of days and then be like, oh no, I don't have a problem. And then uh, like one day I had like one glass of wine and then the next day it was three. And as soon uh, like, I have no clue, time went by and I was on a full bender and I can't even remember how long the bender was. But anyway, at this point it just like turned into benders. And um I've actually not a lot of I can't really recall what happened between January and March, except I know that once I drank like so much that I started hallucinating and I was like jittery all the time and I was like physically dependent on alcohol, so I tried to um, literally on my neck off myself and uh, sorry if this is triggering I'll put it I put a trigger warning um, and then I don't know like you know when you some people will understand this but when you like cut yourself or get injured you actually get an adrenaline shot and like I don't know when I cut myself in the show that I just called my now uh, fancy that I um he needs to get on the phone ASAP um you know and that was then he called the ambulance and oh my god that was terrible uh, I got like the police came the ambulance came and um first i had to go to the hospital to get that soon back together like i love this car fortunately it's not really visible and um yeah first i went to the hospital where he's soon it back together and uh then god i hate this part of the story i went to the police station uh, no, they forced me to go to the police station um, because I was suicidal, so I couldn't be left alone. And then I spent a night at the police station. Um, I don't know, I took my ADHD medicine, like, you know, uh, Concerta, which is kind of like the legal version of Adderall in Japan. So I was all, I don't know, I was all, whoopsie doo 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 let's talk. And I spent the whole t night talking with um, my uh, police woman who had to supervise me so I don't do any crazy stuff or run away. I remember I was like behind gates on a bed that was made out of the table. Or like go to sleep and I was like N no I can't sleep I'm literally like I uh like I just took my ADHD medicine you know uh, because I thought that someone could somehow kind of help me but it under the influence of alcohol it made me even more crazy anyway I spent the whole night there and I kind of already knew a lot, a lot of stuff about alcoholism so I told them I don't drink because I want to but because I need to and that was actually true. I wasn't drinking because I was enjoying it. Um, which uh, brings back a funny memory, actually. Uh, uh, the guy at the convenience store kind of like already knew me because I always like went there to buy booze day after day. Uh, so he's like, hey, wanna go drinking sometimes together? I was like, I don't drink because I want to. I'm sick. Like, I was like offended. Like, and then he was like, oh, but what you're drinking is healthy, it's wine, it has vitamins in it. I was like, ugh. Anyway, that uh, was just a side story. But yeah, um, I was kind of high on that concert or ADHD medicine and uh, talked the whole night and I don't know, I fell asleep. And I was still hallucinating, like I saw like worms and the walls were all jiggly wiggly. Yeah, but yeah. 
then I really did not want to get hospitalized but that was something that the police station had to decide whether I get hospitalized or not and the police station decided I get hospitalized uh, which was at the giant psychiatric ward uh, near where I live okay not that near but kind of near at least in my prefecture so I was there at the emergency ward of the psychiatric ward with all kinds of people um, I got put on detox medication um, oh no 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 I got put on detox medication and first they put me like in a locked room with a camera and it was really it looked like a prison it only had a mat on the floor anyway uh the doctor came and asked me like do you know where you are do you know what happened i was like yeah like i was totally conscious of what happened and i was so scared i just wanted to pretend i'm fine like i'm totally fine guys um i'm totally fine i won't do it again i don't feel suicidal but they didn't want to let me go and he looked at the doctor looked at me really like with serious eyes and said you know we let one guy go um out of the psychiatric ward too soon and he killed i don't know people and i don't know how that connects to me because um uh, okay i wanted to kill myself but homicide and suicide i don't know maybe I don't know what he meant by that, but it kind of freaked me out. And uh, then I was, uh, after they saw that I'm not crazy, I didn't like scream or shout or have any psychosis, they put me in a better room, uh, which was also barricaded and I couldn't go outside. And there was like a lounge and I could only go to the lounge like where all the other sick people are um mentally ill people and um even i had to ask for access to go to your bar but then they saw that i'm not monster energy but then they saw that i'm not like that crazy so i got transferred to the room where I could go like to lunch, but I still couldn't go outside for two weeks straight. No fresh air, only inside in a room with a camera. And that freaked me out. And that was when I was diagnosed with alcoholism, or like as they call it in Japan, alcohol addiction. Um, I just call it alcoholism. But yeah, uh, anyway, I just put up a good front and I did what they said I participated in programs and I was out in two weeks but I was still very fucked up um as you said as I said I had not I, I didn't drink at that time anymore I had like three weeks sober even when I went back home I didn't drink and um I managed like two months sober, but like life wasn't that great because alcoholic mind, you know. Um, I just felt miserable and like, I don't know, some days are, I don't know, I, I wasn't really living life. I was like most likely depressed, like just browsing Reddit and trying to distract myself from the fact that I exist. Anyway, um... One day, uh, like, I took the first drink after, like, because I thought I could handle it. And bam, then the relapse uh, happened again. That was around May, June, July, until August. And I spiraled pretty hard. Um, I went back to my four locos and stopped drinking wine and 
I also started drinking pure whiskey. I don't know why. Like, that's it. Like, if you ask an alcoholic, like, why did you drink? Uh, like, sometimes, I don't know. We don't know. Like, I don't know. I have no fucking clue how this happened. But at that point, I was like... Because I was drinking really strong stuff. Oh, my nose is itchy. Oh. I was drinking really strong stuff. And... I... Remember like going to the ER three times in a week. I had to call the ambulance three times in a week because I woke up with heart palpitations and this is terrifying guys. Like I was sick to my stomach, like even if I wanted to drink alcohol I couldn't and I had heart palpies. Like I felt like I could have a heart attack at any time. My hands were like Ugh, shaking and the worst part is like the hallucinations like I was lying in bed I couldn't like get up I was like half asleep half awake half dreaming and the worst part is this weren't just dreams it felt so real and it was I was like seeing like monsters I was like thought I was like in hell where like people like I saw people uh, that I didn't know in my room and oh god I get the shivers just from talking about that I saw people in my room that I didn't know it was like peeking into another dimension it made me believe in the paranormal because that was so creepy um I don't know uh I remember like attacking one of the people but I was like I thought I was getting up and doing something but I was just like in bed like totally like pass out and like seeing things and that was yeah it was pretty bad um also my teeth started to get really bad from all the acid uh, of the four locos that I drank um so my teeth ouchy very much um couldn't eat like that I had to take tons of painkillers and where and anyway um after a while i got better because i was keeping on drinking because at that point i had given up and i had at this point complete physical dependency on alcohol um So I went a little bit crazy, like not in hallucination wise, but in the other direction. So I broke up with my fiance and I went out drinking because I thought, uh, well, let's drink at a bar instead of uh, drinking alone in my room. Maybe that will make it more fun. It sounds so stupid. Uh, anyway, I then went to the whole like club scene in Tokyo and that's when I discovered host clubs and I thought like hey maybe this could fix my depression like so basically it's guys who look like k-pop stars and uh the job is to drink with them and all sell expensive champagne so that was kind of my thing drinking champagne now here comes the fun part um the champagne is sold at a very high price so that the hosts can like they have like number one number two number three blah 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 um and the guy that said he liked me was like number one of the club and anyway I sort of got tricked so basically we went after I was at the house club we went out to drink even more and they said oh I want to live together with you uh, so we went apartment hunting and then he gave me like a Bulgari ring and said like I'm his girlfriend now and anyway, I should come to the host club again tomorrow. So I got there and 
I don't know, I was kind of drunk, so I can't remember it exactly, but uh, he kind of knew who I was on social media, so he thought I was pretty loaded, and um, they did this thing where you sell a champagne and then party, and then you pay after that and there's a time limit but you can't drink the champagne yet only after paying but you can party by looking at the champagne okay now that i'm actually talking about this sounds super stupid but anyway the champagne caused it guess what one two three four five thousand us dollar bucks um, and I was like, wow, that's just perfect. This is gonna cure my depression because now I'm pressured into working hard and making a shit ton of money. This is gonna totally gonna work out. And then, um, I woke up again, like super sick, and I was like, what the f did I just do? And well, anyway, uh, I got hit on by someone really handsome and I told him the story about the whole host situation and he said, oh, well, all hosts just do that, like, and that the Bulgarian ring is probably fake and he has like 100 pieces of rings laying around in his apartment and whatever. So, um, I started to go out with this guy, but the host guy noticed that because I was kind of there when he was he called me and the other guy was kind of there and he was like we were video chatting I know he said turn on your camera because I want to know where you are and well I was drunk again so I turned on my camera without thinking much and uh, the guy was blonde so uh, he was like who's that blonde bitch and um, anyway they had a then he was like hand me the phone to the blonde bitch so uh, the blonde bitch and host trap guy called and had a longer conversation. Anyway, he told me I don't have to pay the 50000 if I can get a lawyer. So I did that and um, I went uh, to... Oh, no. Not I went to the lawyer. I called my ex-boyfriend which is now my fiance and ask him if he knows lawyer because he's kind of like um kind of pretty well lawyered up so yeah I went to go my then ex-boyfriend which is now my fiance to the lawyer and we had a phone call and he's with the host and we, the lawyer recorded that phone call and the host said something in order to blackmail me so the lawyer was like if you're blackmailing her like she doesn't have you to pay you the money so I got out of it woohoo uh, I guess oh gosh this cringe anyway um so, do you see my nice Kurumi top? <laughs> I know it's cool. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, and yeah, this necklace is kind of out of place. It's hard with Maria inside. Okay. Uh, Mary. Yeah. Um, and then, um, my, it was just my, now Fiancé's boyfriend, no, b birthday, <laughs> my now Fiancé's birthday, and we kind of got back together, and we, um, are together since then, and I got engaged, and everything's going pretty smoothly, but I was still sick and drinking alcohol, and I did a lot of stupid shit like enjoying myself like my arm and stuff because I wanted to die and stuff like that. Anyway, I one 
day, thanks to the mercy of God, I got this idea of like just going to rehab because I kind of felt like I admitted ultimate defeat uh, over alcohol and I wanted to fix this so I went to rehab. Um, I still couldn't function without alcohol so I was like sipping like you know uh, like while I was in the waiting room to get admitted to my room I was like sipping for locos from a Gatorade bottle and that was kind of the last drink I had since then yeah for loco in a Gatorade bottle at the psychiatric ward waiting room while well, getting admitted while well, waiting for getting admitted um yeah and because I have medication the withdrawals weren't that um heavy I didn't hallucinate my hand tremor stopped at least a little bit it's still kind of err but hey who look no hand, hand tremors okay and yeah the doctor kind of it was really nice uh, it was a really good experience at the hospital um I since the day I went to the hospital, I mean rehab, psychiatric ward, whatever, I went into 12-step meetings and got a sponsor. I should probably shouldn't talk about this, but yeah, you, you guys know that's like just like if you have a problem, that's an option you can do. And for me, it was very helpful. Um, I got better that way both physically and mentally and my fiancé came to visit me every single week even though it's like a three hour car ride away from his house and yeah and funny thing is I was actually the only one who was an alcoholic at this young at age 25 all other girls were meth addicts like yeah meth is a thing in Japan I didn't know that I didn't even know people were like, like I thought like Japan is super strict with drugs which apparently you can get meth um, every other alcoholic was either an old lady or an old guy Younger people, the younger people in the addiction world were all kind of addicted to illegal drugs. Um, so yeah, I just, I just have to say I won, I keep winning. I, I was the only 25 year old hardcore alcoholic. Go win as you win on everything. Just a bit kidding, it was bad sarcasm. But, uh, yeah, I came out and then... I had some issues adapting to real life, but yeah, it went well, and here I am now. Yeah, just living life. Um, recently started streaming Pokemon on Twitch. Uh, OnlyFans, if you're interested in some spacey stuff, I am updating this regularly as well. And yeah, I do stuff like going to poetry class, journaling, and watching Netflix in, as a hobby in my free time. Is that a hobby? No, that's not a hobby. Netflix is not a hobby. Is it? Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, I go to the dentist. I'm not afraid of things I used to be afraid of anymore like picking up the phone when I don't recognize the number or in general just like what people think about me like it totally stopped caring what people think about me um yeah that's pretty much it and if I I 
I come up with anything else, then um, that will be another video for you guys. Um, I look forward to see your reactions to my story, which was it wild? Was it not wild? I don't know. Reaction, please. Looking forward to it. See you soon. Bye bye.